with Christmas time and all the new toys that are coming out, today we are going to look at a new one that I got from Vox Lab. Let's take a look at this resin printer. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video, we are going to unbox this Vox Lab resin printer and we're going to get it put together here on the tool bench and get a first print out of it and take a look and see how it does. So that's the plan for the day is to get this guy out. But before we jump into that, if you enjoy the content you see on this video, as you go through it, hit that subscribe button, join the crew. We're always doing all kinds of new stuff and I'm going to definitely start talking more about resin printing this year. Um, Cause I'm even going to try to get into it more myself, but we're going to get this guy out. We're going to get put together and then we're going to take a look at that. If you have any questions, Comments down below. Email is on the community page. Let me know. We'll talk about it and we'll see what we can do. And also, you know, share the video with your friends. If you know somebody that got a new 3D printer this year, show them the channel. Maybe they'll find something they're interested in because we do resin, we do FDM, all kinds of weird stuff on this channel. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. But I want to hop into getting this printer out of the box, getting it set up on here at the table. We'll do the initial calibration, and then I'll put it through a print. So Let's jump to that. All right, so let's just set this thing down and get this out of the box. So you guys can see I already opened the box because I wanted to make sure, one, it was okay, but you know, it's always fun taking stuff out of the box. First off is always the all important start guide and thumb drive with all the media for this type printer. That's a really nice thumb drive too, I will say that. Um, and there's some filter masks in here as well. So we'll set that on the table. The all important power adapter. We're gonna definitely need that. Nitrite gloves. Definitely want those. Allen wrenches and extra bits and pieces for the printer are always good. The other half of the power cord and a very handy Ziploc bag. So we'll get that put together real quick. And then the all important putty knives. So one thing I've come to learn with resin printers, they come with really nice putty knives. And as you can see, that one has a very nice beveled edge to it, which is a good thing. And I dropped the plastic one. That is a very interesting design, but actually very useful in the way they've done it of getting up along that side bay and getting the resin pulled out. So that's a really good putty knife too. So set that to the side, we'll get rid of that. Now comes for the the very happy moment of getting rid of the foam and reaching down. Ah. Oh. And getting the goodies. Alright, so that's everything out of the box. Let's get this guy unwrapped and take a look at it. Now this is more of a standard size resin printer. This is not a large one like a Photon Mono X. Um, bigger does not always mean better with resin printing. It's something I'm coming to learn. Get rid of the bag. We got all kinds of tape. They took really good job compared to some of the other printer packaging I've seen to package this guy. So let's find the seam so I can get this tape off. All right. And the all so good of removing those, that stuff. Go ahead and take that off. and clean. Now we'll start actually digging in to the actual machine here. Alright, that's off. First off, let's take a look at our build plate. So, very good design here. Uh, two bolts for leveling process. Very clean, very sleek. 
I love that it's got a groove to let it slide in properly so it's always going to be straight when it slides on. That's a very good design. Don't be difficult. Don't be suspicious. Ugh. Why are you being... Where are you taped on here? There we go. Alright. Last bit of foam off. Got a resin bay and everything right there. So I will go ahead and pull this protective film out of the resin bay. That was not the FEP. Let's take a look at the resin bay. So I'm sure there's a protective layer here too that we got to take off. Okay, so let's take the resin bay out here. All right, so that protective layer goes away. The FEP, it's nice, it looks tight. A very, a lot of screws to replace that, so you don't want to mess that up. You can hear my voice reverberating off it. It's in pretty good condition, so that's awesome. Um, the LED, LCD looks fine. Doesn't look like there's any damage there. So that is awesome, but I'm gonna set this guy to the side. Because we got the leveling game to play. And that's always important before you start with this is we got to get it good and level. Otherwise you're going to have halfway done prints, you're going to have stuff that doesn't work good, and we just don't want that. So let's get our power cord undone here. Whoop. Plug it into the handy dandy bench power supply. And let's take a look here. Let's give you a drink of power. Make sure my power strip is on. There we go. There she comes. All right. Ooh, you're noisy. So, very similar setup to Creality Printers. You got the after service sign up that you got to do. Um, you definitely want to do the after service stuff on these because if it leaks in, destroys the LCD, a lot of these printers have very good warranties. So we want to make sure you uh, take advantage of that because um, warranties can be key in this. Um, I've already had to do a warranty replacement on the Photo Mono X um, for a flaw in the machine that it had when it got here. So we're going to install our build plate we're going to do the leveling process but first all right so let's get this on here well it looks like we need to raise that up tool manual 10 millimeter ah the purr of the motors oh. This guy to slide into his home here. I've got it backwards because I need these up front for the leveling process. All right, so we need to loosen these with the proper wrench. When these are loose. go when they're loose it'll move around which is what you want you want it to move around and according to all these instructions you power it on da 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 you take off the the fet bay and what we want to do is put a piece of paper in there ironically you provided me with a piece of paper since there's no resin I'm not going to worry about it and we're going to get a piece of paper in here Actually, I'm going to cut the piece of paper to, to kind of fit first. Oh, so get a handy pair of scissors here. We'll just get that. And I'm going to use a normal piece of paper. We'll 
get that cut the size in there of the FET tray. We'll get that slid up there. And then we will go to tools, manual, and we'll go, so I'll do it again. So we'll go to tools, we'll go to manual, and we are going to press the home key. And it's going to go back, set it to home. Make sure that's straight. So, basically we should be able to twitch this a little bit, but not too much. If that is good, then make sure this part is straight, and then tighten your screws. So you should have a good level calibration there. Alright, make sure we got this right. Make sure you can still pull your paper because sometimes when you tighten those screws it may change it. Um, as long as it's not moving too much, you're good. Then what you'll do is you'll come back here, you'll hit the back button. Whoops, oh no, I just messed it up. So we'll hit home again to put it back. Okay, we're home. Hit the back button. Go to set Z equals zero. And then hit confirm. And that's done. And then we should be able to go back. Once that's set, then we raise this back up. We put our FET bay in. We can put resin in and we can start printing, which is exactly what I'm about to do here in just a second. Actually, I'm going to raise that up a bit more so I can pour my resin. Make sure those are both tight and I'm going to go grab the resin be right back. We're going to pour it in. I'm going to choose one of their files and we're going to get started. All right, so when we're getting started, my preferred resin lately has been Esun's Hard Tough Resin. This runs about $60 for this big bottle, but this is the big bottle. This is the uh, the one kilogram. The uh, five kilogram is a lot is about half the price. But I really love this stuff. It has worked well, really well on some models. And it's not as frail as your standard photopolymer. So, um, and I really found, I didn't really have to change many settings to get to use it. So, well, before I go any further, we do the important thing. Make sure you get the investment in a good set of nitrate gloves, guys. Uh, you don't want to get this stuff on your hands and you only get one pair with the printer. Um, I get mine from Harbor Freight, but if you go check out my $50 and less video, there's links out there too to some of the other ones that I use. Because um, a lot of these are the normal size and I need extra large usually. Uh, so, kind of one of those things. Keep that in mind as you're going through this stuff. Because uh, you can see these don't fit. <laughs> but I'm just pouring resin at the moment, so not anything I'm going to get suspicious about this round other than my hands are definitely bigger than the makers here but that's okay so we'll open this up you really should have a face mask and goggles on don't do as I do just make sure you're being safe I'm not overly worried because like I said I'm just pouring we don't want to lose that cap and then I'm gonna come right here on this corner and I'm gonna pour in the resin I'm not going to pour in a whole bunch. Just enough to get a good fill in the bay. Just like that. Then what I do is these caps that come out, I put them back. Um, it just helps. And then of course put your lid on. Get rid of your gloves. 
don't let the resin touch your skin and get that lid on the printer. So now we have resin in the bay, we're ready to print, we're ready to rock. Now we need their thumb drive because I'm just going to do one of their files. Um, I plan on doing a video just talking about slicers. Get this plugged into the USB bay over here. Alright, we'll give that a second and we'll go back and back. Now sometimes with the new FET paper too, the printer won't stick. Uh, PTFE 3-in-1 uh, oil, you can take and rub it on the FET paper without resin in there of course. Rub it in there to kind of loosen it up so when it pop comes up, it'll actually release. Um, it's a trick I use sometimes. So now we'll go to print. And there's a proxima, there's soft slicing software, there's a reindeer. And that looks like about it. So we'll do the reindeer. And we'll, away she goes. So we'll let this guy print. You can see it's getting ready to let, raise down in there. We'll come back when the print's complete. All right, guys, it finished printing. You can see I've got my gloves on, got my eyewear on, because I don't want gunk in my eyes. And it finished in about three hours. I did let it sit for a little bit. We'll hold it up here to the camera real nice and you guys can see a lot of good detail on there. That is their test print. So definitely a good one. I'm going to get this off the plate and I'm going to get back to the wash and cure station. We'll cure this and we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, there's the final product. It's not really focusing in well. Nice, clean, hollow. Very well detailed, very gorgeous model. I'm very happy with the way this one printed out. I'm gonna get this printer to printing real world stuff for my, st my stuff, but VoxLab Proxima 6 is this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you're curious about anything with resin printing, like profiles or anything like that, and wanna see me do a video on how I set up my printers in, in uh, uh, Shintu Box, let me know, and happy printing. See you guys later.